service to others? Why bother? Thanks to one of my subscribers for giving me the idea for this topic. A couple of weeks ago, the dude8526 wrote in a comment, not related to this video, but I'm curious to know your thoughts on servitude and serving others. I hear a lot of people talk about serving others being the meaning of our existence, and I'm curious to see what other people think of that, especially someone such as yourself that used to be an Anglican priest. Might be an interesting video topic. Cheers. So that's what I'm going to talk about today, from one angle anyway. I'm not good with people. Ask pretty much anyone I actually know. I usually make a mess of interacting with people. It's certainly not something that comes naturally to me, and I have to work hard at it and keep an eye on my own performance, so to speak. I'm not particularly patient with people either. Or, maybe more accurately, I am for a while, but there's often a threshold that I cross where my patience fails. Maybe that's true for everyone. Or maybe my threshold's a little lower than average. Anyway, it just means that interacting with people is fraught with danger for me. Probably them, too. When I first left the Anglican priesthood, I had absolutely no idea what I would do next. For about two or three years, I worked as a community support worker for people with disabilities. I did another stint as a support worker for the long-term unemployed. All very people-intense. And honestly, I hated it. I know many people will talk about how fulfilling and rewarding this kind of work is. It had better be, because the pay is shit. But I have various reactions when I hear people saying how much they love this kind of work. My first reaction, if I'm honest, is, yeah, sure you love it. I don't believe them. I think they're just spouting the expected orthodoxy. But my next thought is, what's wrong with me that I don't get that kind of joy and fulfilment from helping people in this way? So my first reaction is defensive, really. I want to believe that these other people don't really enjoy it either, that they're cranky bastards just, just as I am. They're just saying the right thing. But I know I can't actually claim that with any kind of certainty. It's just a self-defense mechanism for me. I don't want to appear either to others or to myself as an uncaring person. But while I was doing that kind of work, I was deeply, deeply depressed. And of course, because of this, I'm sure I wasn't really able to give any kind of support to these people. Certainly not the emotional support. I needed that myself. Just as an aside, I often wonder whether the person who really enjoys helping other people is better than the person who doesn't enjoy doing it, but does it anyway. Maybe they are healthier, but not necessarily morally better. What do you think? Over the years, I've come to accept that I'm not really built to be a, a helper, at least not in the conventional sense, if there is a conventional sense. Don't get me wrong, if someone asks me for help, I'll give it if I can, whether I enjoy that or not. I'll come back to this in a minute to unpack what it might mean. I've also come to understand that I really must play to my strengths. When I do that, I feel better. Just like the person who feels good when they help someone else. So the best combination for me is when I can help someone in a way that also plays to my specific strengths. So, for instance, if I can fix the settings on someone's mobile phone that have somehow gotten out of whack, then I'll do so. I'll actually enjoy doing that. I'll get pleasure out of helping someone in that context. If someone asks me for a lift to the airport, of course I'll do that too, even if it may be an inconvenience to me and I don't actually get any pleasure out of doing it. Again, I'll come back to what that might mean. When I was an Anglican priest, one of my favourite duties was preaching, or teaching in other capacities. I enjoyed helping people to understand things. Now, I was never conventional in either of these roles as a preacher or a teacher. I rarely towed the line, so to speak. I always tried to present challenging ideas. Also, to present ideas in a way that made more sense in this world today in which we actually live. 
So I was kind of a, a trendy young priest in the diocese. The Anglican Church was always able to accommodate one or two of us in each diocese. But I honestly wasn't trendy just because it was trendy. I wasn't trying to be trendy just for the sake of it. I was always acutely aware of problems with the Bible and with traditional Christian doctrine and teaching. So I was always trying to make sense of this within a modern, really a kind of post-Christian and certainly post-Bible world. And I was doing this as much for myself as for those I was teaching. And I was damn good at it too. I wanted to convey what I thought at the time were the positive, creative, constructive elements of Christian teaching without having to embrace the nonsensical. In the end, I came to believe that Christianity was flawed at its very core, and it became more and more difficult to defend it, even to myself. But that's another story which I've told elsewhere. At that time, preaching and teaching in this way was my way of offering a service. Visiting people in their homes or in hospital most definitely was not. And bear in mind that I spent about five or six years doing that full time as a hospital chaplain. Insane. Giving introductory lectures in theology to university students, theology my way, that was a service I felt at the time that I could offer, sincerely. All of this is to say that serving others works best when you're serving from your own strengths, from your own places of joy, if you like. At least that's true for me. Of course, sometimes you'll help even when it doesn't bring personal joy. So why? Why serve others at all? Well, when it comes out of my own strengths and places of joy, it's as much for my sake as for the sake of the other person. I have these gifts, these strengths, these abilities, how great it is to be able to use them, to share them with others. Don't hide your light under a bushel. But when it doesn't give me joy, when I do it just because it's the right thing to do, well, part of it's just that, isn't it? We serve others just because we've learned from somewhere that it's the right thing to do. And, well, I think partly it's because we fully understand that at some point I'm going to be the one who needs help. So we're paying it back or paying it forward. We understand that there's mutuality here and for society to function we have to respect this mutuality. There's no guarantee that it will all balance out in the end. Maybe we'll help more than we're helped or maybe it will be the other way around. But either way it will help society to function and we all benefit from that. I don't mean to suggest that we maintain some kind of ledger. It's not gangster style, now you owe me. I won't come seeking payment. But there is, I think, an unwritten social contract that we will help each other. Ultimately, for all our benefit. Of course, there'll always be freeloaders or people who take advantage of this system. And I think society seeks to put measures in place to account for this. But that's a whole other topic, I think. I think this is the meaning and purpose of the golden rule, not the negative version which states don't do unto others what you don't want others to do to you. That leads only to an avoidance of harmful behaviour rather than to the promotion of positive behaviour. No, rather I'm referring to the positive version of the statement, do unto others as you would have others do unto you. I think pretty much everything flows ultimately from this principle. I help you, and I know that someday you will help me. This is the social contract. Most of us try to adhere to it, I think. But I will help you most effectively when I can do so out of my specific strengths and out of my place of joy.